Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, and welcome to the epic conclusion, for real this time, of the wardrobe. So, picking up where we left off, a rather dapper zombie is giving us some bubble bath, and we are heading back to the party to give it to a guy who is bathing instead of partying. I don't know why he's doing this, but he is doing this. Do you need some more bubble bath by any chance? I have a bottle of it here with me. Ah, be quiet, okay, you or can my go husband in. will hear us. You can lay it down on the bubble bath shelf. And welcome to what is probably the most reoccurring problem I had with this game. I didn't know what the hell I was doing 90% of the time. Now granted, it is at least a little bit amusing to give bubble bath to a dude in a bathtub. Especially when the bathroom looks like this. Still, I really had no idea why I was doing this. Until suddenly I was rewarded for my actions, which opened up a whole new area. Here, listen to the guy explain it. I work as a security guard at the city museum, so situations like this don't come around that often. Luckily, Ralph, my cousin, hates Halloween and offered a cover for me. A security guard for the museum is really necessary on Halloween night? That's what I told the union. But do you think they listened? Anyway, take this. To repay the favor of the bubble bath. It's a bit wet. I don't even want to know where you kept it. So now an entirely new area has opened up. And all we had to do is time travel back in time, jump in some rotting fish, and then go to a zombie that's hidden underground and give bubble bath to a dude at a party. I mean, when I put it together like that, it just seems oh so logical. And speaking of logical... Yeah, that really doesn't have anything to do with anything, but hey, we got a cutscene and we get to see what the dude in the cave with the demons up to now. He's just painting on the wall because apparently finding a flying saucer just isn't impressive enough. Unlike this T-Rex right here. Yes, welcome to the rather impressive museum with a lot of eye candy, but not really a whole lot to do. You see, there's only two things that are key to the game here. Well, three, actually. If you count this diffuse bomb that we need to pick up, and then this mummy lady who we need to help. You look like you're waiting for someone. I'm waiting for one of my countless suitors to get the nerve to come forward. What would keep them from doing it? Exactly what I've been asking myself. I'm afraid everybody is too scared of my beauty. The burden of being so beautiful, yes. So in case you can't tell, we gotta help this mummy lady get hitched. Why, you ask? I mean, well, we a good person. There's not really too much of a logical connection here. Now granted, we will get an item after this quest, but at the time, I just don't see how this helps us get our wardrobe to the house we need to go to. If anything, it seems like a side quest, but yeah, whatever. That's pretty much how this entire game's been constructed. You wander around, bump into amusing things, and help them out if you can. And it's actually pretty easy to help out this lady. If anything, it's Probably one of the more straightforward puzzles, because all you have to do is give her a love letter, then gather the necessary items for a person to get married, and then find her suitor, which is, well, obvious because there's only one other mummy in this entire game. Listen, son of God, since you're one of the creator's superstars, I was wondering if you could preside over the wedding of a friend of mine. Well, actually, I'm the owner of that <laughs> massive franchise of chapels, churches, and cathedrals. Who better than me, right? I'm... Just a little too drunk. I could use a very small bit of help. But not from above, because if my father sees me in this condition, I'll have to wait millennia for the next coming. A uh, short review on I now pronounce you happily ever after. <laughs> now you can kiss the bride, but discreetly. That kind of thing. Could this help? Oh, just what I needed. We'll see you at the wedding then. But you don't even know where the wedding is. Brother, I may be wasted, but I'm still omniscient after all. See you later. Well, that was really easy. And yeah, we got to meet Jesus. And now the mummy and the mummy lady can be married and it's all very cute and told in a cutscene. By the power vested in me by my father, I now pronounce you man and wife. And now, come back home to update your relationship status on Facebook. Uh, 
But now that we've done something good, I suppose we should do something bad to make our whole moral level kind of level out. Yes, we maced the bathtub security guard guy so we can take apart the bathtub for, uh, I, I mean, because we can. Eventually it makes sense, but at the time I was just picking up items. And oh yeah, since we maced a poor helpless guy for no discernible reason at the time, let's go harass some children because who the hell likes children? Your firecrackers or your life? <laughs> Do you think you can scare someone dressed like that? Not even a fly. Now that I notice, I've never seen a more ridiculous Halloween costume. Really awful. <laughs> I'm afraid I will just have to come up with something else. Nowadays, our generation is too desensitized by TV and video games. Thanks a lot, HBO. Lay wrong generation right. And yeah, I just kind of found that whole exchange to be just mildly cringy. But at least there's a payoff when Grandma strikes vengeance upon these kids. Is someone being mean to my little Ronnie? Brat! Don't worry, honey. Now Grandma will take care of them. <laughs> you should have seen their faces. We did that so we could pick up some firecrackers because we had to fix a defuse bomb in the museum to open a safe in the house party. Yeah, who knew that's what we had to do, but that's what we have to do. But first, we have to give the security guard on duty a near heart attack because, well, we need to fool the security cameras to steal the bomb. I mean, really now, folks, when I lay it all out like this, how can he not understand what's going on? From the look of things, the pumpkin shape on your skull is still visible. <gasps> Yahoo! Now we can blow up the safe. At this point, everything does seem a bit ad hoc, doesn't it? Well, imagine playing it. 30 seconds should be enough. Maybe I overdid it with the gunpowder. So we are rich now, we got a big old wad of folding money, but it turns out what we need is some change. So we can use a payphone in front of the house because we just can't ask someone to use their cell phone. Hell, we could probably pay them a nice big old wad of cash for it because what's money to a skeleton? But anyway, in order to get some quarters, what we're gonna have to do is throw some money in a well and then go back in time because the money will change properties because that's how the space-time continuum works in this game. I mean, who am I to criticize? We're a goddamn Roman skeleton. Logic be damned. So now that we've gone back to the 80s and picked up a bag of quarters, because as we all know, in the 80s they didn't have any folding money, we can finally use the phone to call a moving company so they can pick up the wardrobe and then we can kind of end this game. Hello, Hippie Express Courier. How can I help you? Good evening. I'd like to arrange the delivery of a casket to number 13 Friday Avenue. Expenditures are charged to the consignee. Are you aware of the packaging regulations of our service? Tell me. To avoid damage during transportation, we ask you to wrap the object with a material that can soften impact. Usually, it's plastic or bubble wrap, but you can use any solution you prefer. At this moment, I don't think I can satisfy this requirement. I invite you to call us back as- In the meantime, goodbye! I don't have the strength- It's not a bad idea, but- Well, I guess let's go about satisfying that requirement. And to do that, we have to get Morpheus his little blue pill. Wake up, Neo. The Matrix has you. Follow the white rabbit. You know, it's a joke about Viagra because Morpheus can't get it up. Look, it's a bit on the nose, folks. I have something with me that will make you very happy. What is it? 
bread pill. You take a trip to Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I'm not completely convinced. It's strawberry flavor. What does the rest matter? Ah, you're right. Give it to me. Yeah, now we get a trip balls. Huh. Well, now the game gets all meta. At last. I think I'm still tripping. He was right, anyway. Strawberry flavor. Hey! Hi! Welcome to the Ashcliff Hospital. You gave me a bleeding fright. Did you come to see me? Actually, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Mm, nobody comes here to visit me. Always just the patients. Don't nobody ask for poor Amber. Do you know why I'm called Amber? I don't care. It's for the color of my hair. Compelling. God, why are we being an ass to Amber? Is that a reference to something I just don't know? I mean, this room is filled with a lot of references, so maybe I, I just don't get it. But she seems like she just wants a friend, and, well, we're an asshole. Were you looking for me? Not at all. I can tell you about my day if you want. It's very interesting. Actually, I'm trying to attract the attention of those three guys in there, but it seems they can't hear me. You only think about the patients. What did I ever do to you? Nothing, in fact. I just want to talk with them. All right. Fine. Farewell. Yeah, this whole sequence is just really bizarre. But hey, at least we get to speak to the developers, and one of them looks like he's a Soviet soldier. Okay, this game is definitely dated. Guys, there's Skinny. Hey. Hola. Do you know my name? Skinny, I created you. You think I don't know your name? Where are we exactly? I welcome you to our new studio. We've all gone mad during development of the game. Too much stress and too much work to do. Especially with Francesco as project leader. I have a bad temper, I know. What do you mean you created me? Skinny, come on. You know very well you were inside a video game. What did you think you are? A love child of two pieces of code in C-sharp? I've redesigned you thousands and thousands of times, really. <laughs> By golly. What else are you developing now? Just consider this moment a sort of strange temporal anomaly. We're still working on the wardrobe, even if the game has actually been released for a while. You wouldn't happen to be working on a sequel in secret, right? No! no. Okay, okay, there's no reason to get heated up. Since you're my creators, I have a couple requests. We're listening. I've always dreamt of having superpowers. What if I was able to fly? No way, too many game design problems. A bionic arm? It would clash with the anatomy of your character. A Hawaiian shirt instead of this sweatshirt? Handling your static poses and animations would become way too difficult. And what about- Halt. Sorry, but you have only been given three wishes. But wishes run out only after they've been granted. Sure, but I'm not the genie of the lamp. What can I say, folks? How many times does a video game character question its own creators? Yeah, this is certainly the highlight of the game. Why have I been brought back to life? It's not my place to say. Let the player figure it out by himself. Well, I really haven't been able to figure out much of anything about this game, so... I'm just gonna say, uh, this is just something really weird that they threw in here to make an already strange game all the stranger. I mean, it's not really a bad move, it's just... What the hell can I say, folks? I could be like, oh my god, look at this meta moment, ah, life-changing. I mean, not really, it's just an interesting sort of thing that's happening. I mean, maybe this whole thing's entirely optional. I just found a very impressive Easter egg. I honestly don't know at this point in this game. How can I leave this place? You just need to keep your eyes shut long enough. And always remember that nobody can see past their own choices. Are you telling me I'm the master of my own destiny? Hell no. You're in a damned adventure game. Days, six well, that was sufficiently weird. So let's go ahead and pick up all the necessary items we need to get the wardrobe, which is a coffin. I mean, the dude just took minutes a coffin. I don't, nothing really makes sense in this game, but hey. As I said before, we at the tail end, folks. We're running on fumes now. We're about to solve our problem and have our resolution and everything. I'm waiting for a courier to take the wardrobe away. Could you maybe pack me inside using this kit? I have to create a nice prank. Dude, I'm always ready to help out with these kind of things. I wish I could see his face. I can't imagine what a fright he will have. 
Neither can I. Believe me. Okay, that was easy enough. We just used parts of the tub, some spray paint we found on the ground, and oh yeah, a little bit of the mummy wrapping we found outside the hanky-panky room, because that was the entire point of getting those two married, so they would do the big nasty mama style. Wonderful. Ronald? Ronald, wake up! Ronald, it's me, Skinny. Do you really not recognize me? Remember? Me and you were going to conquer the world. We kept on saying that we were meant to do great things. Well, in a way, I guess that happened, but nobody could have imagined all this. Wait a minute, so the dude's been living in this coffin wardrobe thing for five years, and Ronald's never noticed. I thought, like, what did I even think? It doesn't matter, it's the end of the game, folks. But apparently Ronald had no idea Skinny was living in the wardrobe in his room. That's just incredibly massive, and you would think over the course of the years, he would have noticed the little skeleton running around his house. But hey, who am I to judge? I mean, the kid's got a bong there, so he just might be stoned all the time. You couldn't know about my Allergy. Even I wasn't aware of it. Ultimately, there are a lot of perks to being dead. I have an infinite amount of free time, and I can eat everything I want without being worried about my weight. I'm even immune to electricity. Like I'm a superhero. I'm sorry you suffered so much. I know how tough things have been for you since that day. You have nothing to blame yourself for, believe me. I have nothing to blame you for. I couldn't breathe. I just heard you screaming. It wasn't difficult to understand what was going on, but incredibly, that was the last thing I remember. No light to follow, no extracorporeal experience, just a big nothing. Disappointing, don't you think? When I finally woke up, all was dark. It took me a while to realize I was in a wardrobe. In this wardrobe. I know, it's really absurd, but it's the truth. I've been brought back to life and now I'm a skeleton. You have to go back to talking. If you don't tell somebody about what happened that day, you'll end up being damned for eternity. That's why I'm here. Because I love you, Ronald. Skinny. Skinny, wait! Don't go! Oh, what a touching ending. We love a friend. Uh, so that was a wardrobe. It was most definitely a game that was chock full of references and a very interesting atmosphere. But in terms of actual gameplay, I found it to be pretty damn wanting. Like, all the puzzles just did not make any lick of sense until well after the fact. Like, why did we burn down the treehouse? Why, to draw the attention of the dude spray painting so we can pick up a can of spray paint so then we could eventually spray paint 
our address on the wardrobe so the guy could pick it up and send it to the house where we just are like we love you ronald and then we die i i mean folks you saw it could you make much sense of it i mean in terms of narrative it doesn't make a whole lot of sense like a lot of amusing things happened but at the end of the day there doesn't seem to be much of a narrative flow even in hindsight i had a difficult time discerning how exactly to present this game to you folks because it's just a lot of stuff happening until it stops happening and speaking of, look at this little teaser at the end of the game. I mean, is that sequel bait? I don't know. But he really died. Ah, yes. I almost forgot. You're dead. Yeah, at the end of the day, I could say that this game is, well, something that maybe you'll like a lot more than I did. It's by no means a bad game. Just the aesthetics alone are very interesting, and all the little references throughout this game are just lovely bits of eye candy. It's certainly a visual treat. But as far as narrative goes, I, I really don't know what the hell happened in this game. A bunch of stuff, and then we died and Slenderman's here because, well, why not? And yeah, on that note, why not end the video here? Have a good day, folks.